but no one. I'm just one more grain of sin. Except I've been touched by the master's strong hand. Oh, I feel the touch of the master's
and he hit this wood with his leg. I'm telling you. I don't care if you're married. I don't care if you got a house full of children. I don't care. I don't care if you live by yourself. This is for you. This is for you. The meaning of loneliness, which uh, Dr. Webster gives us, is sadness because one has no friends or company. The quality of being lonely and remote. Feeling of being isolated. Feelings of depression and abandonment. That's the meaning of loneliness. Now, I'm not going to get too morbid with you, okay? I'm not going to get too down into the dark stuff with you. But I'm going to enlighten you to what God says. And this is what he spoke to me. Loneliness isn't just the result of isolation. You know, that's what, that's what we think. Nobody's around. That's the reason I'm lonely. That, that's not it. That's just part of it. Loneliness is, isn't just the result of isolation. This is what God spoke to me during the night. Loneliness can be the result of of expectations of companionship not being met. Okay, well, now that's another one we, you know, that, that we think of. Loneliness can be the result of expectations of companionship not being met. The expectations do not have to be on a high standard, but it can be the results. From it, it, but it can be the results from too high of a standard. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. Do you understand? How many here set standards that you never meet? Two people. Okay. Oh, I'm preaching to you two. <laughs> we do. We set standards. That we never meet. We set goals. That we never meet. And we get depressed. Because of it. And we get down on ourselves. Because we cannot. Reach the standard. Or the goal. That we set for our life. And we struggle with it. We beat ourselves up with it. Hallelujah. You can have someone next to you. Listen to this. You can have someone next to you, but who is preoccupied to the point that they do not meet your standard of companionship, whether it be too high or at a sensible level. They could be watching TV and, and you think, I just need some companionship, you know. I mean, it's their movie. It's their movie night. It may be gun smoke. <laughs> I wear them out. <laughs> Already wore out. And then that companion slide over next to you, put their arm up and lock it in with yours. And just set their chin on your shoulder and gawking at you. And you're like, shoot them. Go ahead and shoot them. <laughs> Lord bless him with a bridge. No, the person watching the movie is saying, shoot them, shoot them, go ahead and shoot them. And that person is wanting companionship, wanting a closeness because they feel a loneliness inside. They feel a need for some type of companionship. And that person's not giving it to them because they're preoccupied. 
For some people, hear me, for some people, any amount of loneliness can be overwhelming. Just a little bit of loneliness. Maybe a little more lonely, or maybe a lot of, it doesn't matter. It's overwhelming to some people. There's some of you in here that when you're lonely, it's just the end of life. Okay? Jesus, why don't you come get me right now? I'm lonely and nothing's happening here. Amen? Some people get dramatic with it. I mean, they're wallowing on the floor. Oh, God, I'm lonely. They're wallowing on the bed. Oh, God, I'm lonely. Something. You go ahead. Don't hold it in. It'll hurt. <laughs> Woo. They're so overwhelmed that they get to the point that they go to drastic measures to have that companionship, whether good or bad. They search for people that will give them some companionship, whether it's intimate or whether it's friendship. They'll even go to the devil I'm not talking about the booger man with the long tail and the pitchfork either. I'm talking about somebody that they know is an enemy of their brothers and sisters. And they'll talk with them. Why? Because they're so overwhelmed by loneliness. They can't get up with the good ones, so they will connect with the bad ones. That's what God spoke to me. Loneliness can be so overwhelming. Some people can, can make it through it. And some people cannot. It devastates their life. And they begin to make wrong decisions, wrong choices. It's just whoever that's there. To, to comfort them, to get rid of the loneliness. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. If they just have someone to help them with the loneliness because they cannot handle it. Now that you're in the mud, I want to show you a biblical story of someone that was very lonely. And it comes out of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Paul said, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it might not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord, listen, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Amen? Instead of turning to whatever, turn to God. Turn to the Lord. Let Him give you things. Let Him give you comfort. Let Him strengthen you. Let Him be the one that dissipates the loneliness in your life. Hallelujah. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. You, you know, I, I had to just stop and think about, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Sometimes loneliness can be like a lion trying to devour us. But he said, the Lord stood with him and he was delivered. Amen. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work 
and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, there is a time we need to be alone. There are times for that. Some people struggle with that. Some people like others around. They like them around because it helps to kind of pick them up depending on their conversation. But they like people. They like to talk to people on the phone. They like to chat with people on text. They like to send emails to people. They like to be in person with people. They didn't like us. They like to go out and eat with people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And they like to be around doing something. Busy. Always busy. But there's a time that we have to be alone. And it says in Matthew 14 and 23, and when he, being Jesus, had sent the multitudes away. I, I know some of you, you just, you know, you cannot grasp sending somebody away so you can be alone. You know, it's like, come on, come on, come on, come on. But he being Jesus, sent the multitudes away. He went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. When he was there alone in the physical. But he stepped into what? The presence of who? Of God. He wasn't alone. He was alone in this physical sense. But he was in the presence of God. Walking and talking with God, communing with God, so he wasn't alone. See, some of us, we're all about talking. Amen. What did I just say? Some of what? Okay. I was just making sure I didn't exclude myself. Some of us, is, we're all about talking. And that helps us communication, okay? But we can't distinguish the talk to the Heavenly Father from the talk with someone else, some earthly person. We, we can't seem to grasp the concept. We're wanting to see the physical person. I, I, you know, maybe you need, when you go to do your prayer calls, maybe you need to take an extra chair in there. Now, I don't mean get you a mannequin and sit it in there and dress it up like Jesus. I ain't, I'm not talking about that. You know, if someone was to come up to you and see you praying, they say, oh, they're just praying. But if they see you praying and talking to a mannequin, <laughs> hello, straight jacket time. <laughs> I know if you put him in that chair you may <laughs> what did Jesus say in Matthew 28 and 20 about being alone he said this last last sentence and lo I am with you always even to the end of the world. Amen. So you are not alone. You think you're alone. You're, you're alone as far as the, the physical person, physical people being around you. But you're never alone because <laughs> John 14 verse 16 through 18 says this, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you, what? Forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. Somebody say, I know him. Hallelujah. My goodness. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come.
come to you. Now listen, this world, the people that do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ cannot grasp the fact that Jesus is always with them. They're never alone. But us, me and you, as Christians, we know that we're never alone. We know that we have a heavenly Father sent His Son, sent His Spirit, that He dwells with you morning, noon, and night. Amen. But we still get overwhelmed because of the loneliness. We still get overwhelmed. You know what we've got to do? We've got to slay that giant. Do you know how to slay that giant? In those times of loneliness, just say, Jesus, I know you're here. Jesus, I know you're here. Jesus, you haven't left me. I know you're here. You're with me. You're in me. I know you're here, Lord. I know you say, well, it's not quite, it, it, it isn't real easy, okay? But if you keep on practicing, it's true, amen? It's true, Hallelujah. You know what? I, I had to practice to learn how to ride a bicycle. Don't hold it against me, but I learned on a girl's bike. <laughs> you know, the boy's bike got that center piece that goes across. The girls would dip down. So I was hung down there. I was real small, and I'd be paddling that thing, red, bust my toes, my knees, and my nose. Amen. But I kept practicing. It may hurt a little bit. It may be a little impossible or a little tough for me. But I kept doing it over and over. Next thing you know, I was riding that bike all over the county. And you keep saying, Lord, I know you're here. I know I'm not alone. I know you're helping me. I know you're with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to keep talking to him. You say, Pastor, you make it sound pretty easy. I did not make it sound pretty easy. You should have been on that bike. <laughs> you should have been the one barefooted with nothing but shorts on, busting your elbows, your knees, your toes, and your nose. It wasn't that easy. You say, well, if we're Christians, this should be simple. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, we're battling this thing right here called flesh. Amen. That's what we're battling. And we're battling the enemy that comes against us, that doesn't want us to grasp that. That doesn't want us to say, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives within me. I know he might have died on that cross. But he come up out of that grave. And I know he's alive in me. I know no matter where I go or what I do, he is with me every step of the way. Hallelujah. I know that. I know that. Hallelujah. I know he's with me. And guess what? He's with you. He's with you. I know what you're thinking. Well, Pastor, did not God's word say that it's not good for man to dwell alone? That he made a companion for him. Well, you forgot what I said. Sometimes that companion can be right there and have a sensible level of expectation for companionship and not receive it because their spouse is preoccupied. Now, if you're going to go home and, and you're going to shake him every time you want companionship with him, every time you want him to pay you some attention, he may be looking at a video about a drummer that plays a thousand cymbals and 550 drums at one time. You know how 
wife can get glued on that, but you're over there with your chin on his shoulder saying, I should have been there for the baby too. And he said, Whoa, look at him, hit that ride. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and you're like, Praise God, I'm fixing to hit something. <laughs> you know? Don't think it's going to happen every time, okay? Even if you're hearing this message and, and you're thinking, well, oh, man, I'll turn that TV off and just say, oh, baby, yeah, I'm here. I love you. <laughs> How many think that's going to happen every time? Uh, okay, all right. So this is what you have to do, sister. If he's still talking that drum stuff and you got your chin on his shoulder and you looking at his face and he's got this excitement about what's going on in that video, just say, Jesus, he may not want me right now, but you sure do. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Hey, I shouldn't have said that because we'll be hearing about it later. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> You've got someone with you. Don't let the enemy lie and tell you your life is filled with loneliness. He's a liar. You remind him, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And he is with me. He is with me. Amen. And he will help you and keep you from making those wrong choices and those bad decisions. He will help you. But you gotta lean on him. You gotta you gotta listen to him. You got to follow him. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you to stand with me. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. That soldier was weary from the battlefield all alone, but yet he had someone to hold him. <clears throat> Who was it? Jesus. He had someone to hold him up in that time. God's preaching to us. Every one of us. I, whether you're married, whether you're single, God's preaching to us. Some of you may say, well, I've been married so long it doesn't really matter. That's hogwash. If you're human, you're going to need somebody. Amen? You're going to need somebody. You're going to need somebody's companionship. You're going to need, whenever you, you have a, a spouse, you're going you're gonna to want, when you hug them, they're going to hug you back. I'm an aggravator. My wife, she's got a life filled with aggravation. And that's my second middle name. Buford Horace Aggravation Smith Jr. Okay? Sometimes when she hugs me, I'll hold my arm straight down. She'll grab one of them, she'll pull it right down around her, and then she'll grab the other, and I'll be like this. So here we go. Hey, man. But in the end, <laughs> Look, y'all don't get the wrong idea. I am the head of my house. But she's the neck that turns the head. <laughs> you got to you got to conquer that loneliness. You got to conquer that. So it doesn't send you in the wrong direction. Amen. Because it will. It will be like scales on your eyes. You'll walk blindly. You'll walk blindly. Father, thank you. 
dear God, for this opportunity, Lord, to, <clears throat> to share your word. God, I, I, I know these things that we've been preaching on these Slay the Giant series is it's, it's tough to have to hear it. It's tough to have to deal with it. It, it sometimes brings up memories, brings up struggles in your life. But God, we got to know that your word's going to bring us through this. That your word, Lord, says that we will be more than a conqueror, Lord. That, that your word says we will be overcomers, Lord. This is what your word's telling us through all of this. Thank you for speaking what you've spoken this morning, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for sharing this with your servant here. That your servant can share it with your people, Lord. Your children, dear God. Please, Lord, help us. Please, Lord, help us. Hallelujah. 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 Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.